But I want you to know there's different kind of destinies. There's one that you make for yourself. You, you know, you plan your life. You, well, God gets in the middle of that. A little cottage by the, by the river, white picket fence, 2.5 children, and God gets in the midst. And he said, that may be your thoughts. That may be your plans. That may be what you're planning for a destiny, but I've got something entirely different. And it may not seem greater in the duration, but it will certainly seem greater at the end of the journey. In fact, there's going to be some heartache and, and trial and hardship on the way. And when you and I were planning how our life was going to be, we left all that out. We left out all, all difficulty. We never made any room for trouble. And look what happened. God said, I'm going to harness trouble. I'm going to take control and dominion over problems and hardship, and I'm going to use it so that it won't be wasted in your life. It's going to bring you to a place where you can receive a personal, intimate revelation of the glory of God before, way before it's revealed to all flesh. We're talking about when God shows up in a manifested way, and he wants a relationship with you. You know, that's powerful. God has an appointment. We know one thing about his appointments. He never runs late. You see, there, there are two paradigms in adoption. One is the paradigm of, of bridal uh, authority or bridal possession, bridal inheritance. And you relate to him as a bride, and that is a very intimate, personal thing. Remember, he's not looking for worship. He's looking for worshipers. He's not looking for a group. He's looking for individuals. And that doesn't mean that it's not a many-membered bride. It's a many-membered bride. It's a many-membered body. It's oneness. It's an intimate relationship with you. On the other side of that coin is sonship. And sonship is not as intimate and private and personal as bridal. We get them both. God reveals certain things to us in the paradigm of sonship, authority, possession. And he reveals certain things to us in the paradigm of, of the bride and the bridegroom. Intimacy, fellowship, just you and him. And until we get that, until we understand that and our minds don't make it something weird, but our minds begin to make it something special because that's what it is. He was searching for you. If you would have been the only one, he was searching for you. He wants fellowship with you. Having fellowship with me is not enough for you. He wants to have fellowship with you. So I want you to understand that this bride uh, that God has chosen for the last church age of Laodicea, he wants to reveal his glory to us in a very personal and private way. When the, when the veil of the tent falls and it's just you and him, that's the deepest encounter that you can have with the glory. When everything else is shut out and it's just you and him, that's where you know him as he desires to be known. Come on. And there's nothing hidden. You're, you're naked before him. You're just following along the paradigm. You realize that there's nothing you can hide from him. And you also realize that he sees you as you are and loves you ever the more. Nothing that he sees about you in that intimate place of relationship causes him to love you less. In fact, he loves you more because you're making time for him. And he enjoys your company.